Okay, this is uh, A Push Chapter 4, uh, Part 3, actually, because this chapter has had so many long, more difficult uh, topics we need to talk about. So uh, we'll go ahead and finish this up right here uh, with our very last part, the Mid-Century uh, Challenge, War, Trade, and Social Conflict. Um, there are three major uh, events of this time period. Uh, the first of those was the Great War for Empire between Britain and France. Uh, who's, you know, by this time, Dutch is kind of out, the, the Dutch are out of the picture. Um, Spain has fallen on hard times, they're out of the picture. It's really down to uh, Britain and France, or who's going to dominate the New World, especially in North America. Uh, there was also a surge in colonial consumption, uh, meaning buying goods and uh, investing in British manufacturing centers, uh, which indebted them to Britain, meaning that they owed Brit Britain money. Um, that's going to be a crisis that happens in this time period from 1720 to 1765. Uh, also, there was, of course, westward migration, which sparked uh, Indian conflicts from the beginning. Settled along the coast, and as numbers and population have grown, we've continually pushed into uh, Indian lands. Uh, remember that a, a white farmer only needs a couple acres to be able to survive <coughs> by themselves, whereas an Indian tribe needs hundreds of acres, miles and miles, because they're hunters, and the game needs to, to travel through a large area. Uh, so this is uh, very dangerous for the Indians. Okay, so let's get into the first part, which is the French and Indian War. Uh, really, what the French Indian War is over is a, it's a land grant claim. Uh, both sides claim to all the land west of the, uh, the Appalachians and east of the Mississippi River. It's a huge expanse of land. France says, well, that's part of France. Uh, Britain says, well, that's part of Britain. Uh, up to this point, nobody really cares because the only people who lived there were Indians. Uh, it's one thing claiming it on paper, another thing actually uh, controlling it. So, uh, but eventually, uh, in the, in the mid-century, you have uh, the French kind of leaking in, and then you have a huge uh, land grant to British settlers, uh, which is going to open up some 200,000 acres, uh, and this will precipitate this war. Uh, the French are now seen as a threat, so our good friend Ben Franklin actually gets together a Congress called the Congress of Albany, Albany, New York, and this is the North American colony's first look at actually becoming a union. Uh, that was Ben Franklin's idea, that the colonies uh, become part of a loose federation and that they have a standardized Indian policy and, and how they treat their uh, western frontiersmen. Uh, but his plans were shot down. And they were obviously seen as a, a threat to the British, who don't want Americans who they already, Americans already had this idea of freedom and liberty and equality because they're out here living on their own. Uh, the British see this, they don't want to give the Americans any more um, ideas of independence. You know, we still haven't hit this major, major crisis of independence yet, but uh, they know that a union would probably be a bad idea. So Cong uh, Congress of Albany shot down. Uh, what happens, the French begin, they see, when they find out that the British are going to give a land grant to all these British settlers in what they decide is their area, uh, they quickly begin building forts, such as Fort Duquesne. Uh, there in Ohio River Valley and areas like that to kind of halt British expansion. Uh, this leads to a conflict where uh, a young man named uh, George Washington uh, will actually give one of his first service, military services. Uh, he will go in there with the British and, and they will suffer a very sound defeat at Duquesne and boom, French Indian War is involved. Know that the Indians themselves saw the French as a uh, less of a threat. They kind of had to choose sides. That up to this point, the Indians had got along by playing the French off of the British, playing these two powers off of each other. And French, uh, the Indians kind of sat around and said, "All right, we're good." Uh, but now that's not a case. They have to choose sides. And while the British did have some Indian allies, for the most part, uh, the Indians could be allied with the French. The French had much lower numbers. They weren't coming over in families, whereas the British were coming over in entire families. Their population was exploding. Uh, the Indians knew that that was going to mean less hunting grounds for them, more conflict. So they were hoping that the French would actually win and wipe out the British for them. So they chose the side of the French. Um, in the beginning of the French Indian War, the, the French were really putting it to the British. Uh, they fought with an Indian style, guerrilla warfare, hiding behind trees, whereas the British, uh, they 
it fought in the old European, let's line up in a line and let you shoot me down dead style. Uh, what really happened to the French was they changed commanders midway through the war, and a new commander was this traditionalist who said, no, that's not how wars fought. Uh, we got to get in our lines, and unfortunately, when you get in your lines, and the British outnumber you 10 to 1, you tend to lose. So that was kind of the swinging point. But the French Indian War would explode into a, a much larger world war in Europe called the Seven Years' War, which actually lasted nine years. Um, so this was very much who's going to be the European power? Who's going to own the new world? Um, so without a doubt, a crisis. And you'll see that the French Indian War actually causes a lot of the strife and troubles to come and it would really be a, a major factor in the colonists declaring independence. Uh, okay, moving on. Uh, in the mid early 1733, in this time period, uh, the Industrial Revolution occurs in Great Britain. It's where it originated from. Um, of course, they try to keep a lid on it, but that's going to leak out to the colonies. Um, and it really becomes, it, it really makes Britain become this economic superpower, this military juggernaut, because they're funded by all this money. They can buy the technology. Uh, all their soldiers have the best weapons that money can buy, that kind of stuff. Um, and Americans kind of cash in on this for a little bit, uh, and they begin investing in Britain. Well, what happens is after the wars are over, there's an oversupply of goods, and all of a sudden there's an economic crisis in America. Um, and Britain's going to have to pay off that French Indian War, but they're going to want the Americans to help, which is definitely going to lead to some crises in the 1760s that we'll talk about. Stamp Act, Sugar Act, Molasses Act, some of that stuff that you're going to hate uh, in the next chapter. Okay, very, very last little part, I'll just briefly touch on it. Uh, the land grabs. Uh, that were going on west. You have everybody jumping on land, claiming land. Um, you had something called the Regulator Movement in South Carolina, uh, and that was yeah, basically vigilante justice. It's a group of white people that get together um, to regulate on other land grabbers because they didn't feel like they were getting help from the east, from the governments which tended to be in the east. They wanted more court systems in the west. Uh, they wanted represent, representation in the, in the east. Uh, they didn't have any. Uh, the, well, the frontiersmen were, uh, they were viewed very differently from those in the established areas of power. Um, what's kind of cool about this is it's actually like a microcosm of the entire war of independence movement, where we felt like we weren't getting represented in England, uh, we didn't have proper people in positions of power. Uh, that's what's going on for the frontiersmen. Uh, as we're continuing moving west, all those people who are pushing the boundaries, uh, they don't really feel like they're supported by people uh, back east. So, uh, some of the questions here. How do cultural values, conceptions of group identity and autonomy emerge out of cultural interactions between rich government officials, rich colonists, Africans, and natives? Very long. I'm going to make you answer that one on your own, but I do want to point out a few things. Autonomy, what that means is, is that you run yourself. If the colonies are legislating and making laws for themselves, that's autonomy. Okay? I have autonomy in my classroom because I run it basically the way I want, for the most part. Um, how and why did slavery develop in colonies? Uh, keep in mind, uh, geography plays a huge role in that. Uh, there's some economical issues there. Uh, it makes sense to have slaves in the South, uh, economically speaking. What factors shape development of Native society after contact uh, with Europeans? There's plenty there. Think about the Quakers. Uh, think about early Indian slavery. They didn't make very good slaves, but early on the English did enslave Indians on plantations as well. Um, how were changing religious ideals, enlightenment beliefs, and Republican perspectives influenced by Atlantic world exchanges? Uh, you're going to have to look at this more in depth, but I will tell you, remember, People are bringing the ideas, like the ideas of the Enlightenment, over on ships. They're migrating to the New World and bringing those ideas, beliefs, cultures, customs with them to the New World. How do these ideas and beliefs shape colonial identity, politics, culture, and society? Uh, there is an identity. The colonies basically break up into three parts, the north, the middle, and the southern colonies. Uh, each one of these areas, roughly four to five colonies apiece, uh, have their own identity. New Englanders are very different from the uh, Southerners. Uh, politics, culture, and society, all those things go along with it. A Southern genteel society, uh, very different than the Puritan society or the Yeoman Farmer Society uh, of the Mill Colonies. Okay, so remember, go into more depth on those and we'll discuss it in class.